This death, this destruction. Global news impacts us. We have to change the way we live. This is why we need independent media. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our programming. We had to take a short break, but I am glad to stand here in solidarity with my colleague, Daniel Lupker, to introduce two phenomenal individuals who I have to say have been speaking truth to power. And let's say they followed through with one politician. I believe her name is AOC about raising the ruckus. Uh, both were on Revolutionary Blackout Network, as well as making a voice for themselves on social media. Uh, gentlemen, you can uh, unmute your mics and please introduce yourself to our people. We got Jose Vega and we also got, and Kyan, I hope, I think I said your name wrong, but can you please introduce yourself to the people? Yeah, it's kind of this way. You almost this got way. it. Bro. I, I almost got it. I am so sorry for that. But uh, <laughs> Kyan and Jose, thank you so much uh, for being on our show. Now, in case you've been uh, in a coma or living under a rock, uh, this team uh, confronted AOC in this now infamous video. And I think it's one Good outstanding and there's and there's a lot of uh, stuff that i want to unpack here so first let's play it for our viewers congresswoman none of this matters unless there's a nuclear war which you voted to send arms and weapons to ukraine Tulsi Gabbard, she's left the democratic party because there are people who are us okay you originally voted you ran as an outsider yet you've been voting to start this war in ukraine you're voting to start a third nuclear war with russia and china why are you playing with the lives of American citizens? You're playing with our lives. There will be no neighbors if there's a nuclear bomb. You voted to mobilize and send money to Ukrainian Nazis. You're a coward. You're a progressive socialist. Where are you against the war mobilization? He's telling the right truth. You have done nothing. Tulsi Gabbard has shown guts where you've shown cowardice. I believed in you, and you became the very thing you sought to fight against. That's what you've become. You are the establishment, and you are the reason why everybody will end up in a nuclear war unless you choose to stand up right now and denounce the Democratic Party. Will you do that? Yes or no? Okay, simple. Are you going to stop nuclear war? Yes or no? There is no line because this is bullshit. You're, You're not doing the formalities bullshit. right, guys. That's the most important thing now. You know that. Then let's take it up right now because this is the only thing that matters. This is the only thing that matters right now. We could be in a nuclear war at any minute and you continue to fund it. That's what's going on. Why not right now? You're being rude. You're the liar. You're with your Nobody words has there. hold you accountable. That's what's happening. And it is time for you to stand up and realize that what you've been saying has been lies. Let your conscience come through for once. Okay. I, I just, this gets me to like that thing we were saying before where it's like if AOC was gone, we would lose a conservative Democrat's voting record. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's important we start with the beginning because, number one, I mean, for a town hall for AOC, that was shockingly empty. But because um, because what, what people don't know and Jose, you and I were speaking before the show started. And again, uh, it's, it's really good to have both of you on here. Uh, you were also the same individual that confronted Jamal Bowman in a very similar video where you're calling him out in regards for him not following through with his progressive uh, campaign promises. And since then, we haven't seen anything with the squad. So one, what led you to to uh, find out about this event? And uh, what, what was really going on here? Because we've heard some uh, interesting reports where AOC said that you interrupted her from uh, speaking to a deaf constituent. Now, I know you, 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 you explained it also on RBN's network. But because of social media, yeah, people, pe yeah, people have like a, 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 a blurring effect where sometimes people might forget things or might not be uh might not remember it uh one number one let's get started how did you hear about this event uh when you entered it what was the main purpose of it was she even talking about any of her policies and then three uh when you did confront her uh did was was there someone else ahead of you in line what's the whole story jose we'll start off with you and kind i want your commentary as well sure and i'll just start off by saying like kind and i are both 
uh, staffers for the Sarah for Senate campaign. You know, Diane Sarah, she's an awesome candidate. I think you had her on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, we did. Right? We, we did interview yeah, her. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a, she's a LaRouche independent candidate. And um, she's actually the one who told me about the town hall because um, she signed up to the town halls. You know, like the, the emails. You know, you get the email blasts from these different politicians and stuff. And so I get an email um, saying, hey, listen, this town hall is going to happen. And I found out about it. I think it was either the day before or the morning of. Right. Mm -hmm. They never announce these things weeks in advance. Um, and that's to be expected. It, right. It's to be expected. It's also to, like, you know, make sure nobody from another state decides to make try to do what we did. Right. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, to make sure nobody can really show up because they don't want people to show up. Anyway, um, I uh, I called Kynan and, and and actually Kynan kind of did like something, something really cool because uh, Kynan had to go to work. And uh, what was it? <laughs> why'd you call off work, Kyan? <laughs> <laughs> well, for this, I'm glad I did it too. <laughs> yeah, and so we got a third guy who I won't name. You know, he, he was the cameraman, he was cool, he doesn't want to be identified. Fine, no problem. Okay, understandable, you know. And uh, I was just like, you know, Kyan is Queens, I'm the Bronx, you know, we're tech, we're not both her constituents, but we're both in the borough where she's constit, you know, where, where she governs, and mm -hmm. you know. Uh, anyway, yeah, no, so we got there, and it really is the war question. Um, that's what's going on because I confronted Gillibrand actually and Bowman, but Gillibrand first before Bowman on this kill list. You guys know about this kill list, right? That, that yes, that, we've we, we've heard about it where uh, a lot of people have been put on it, I think, from um. Uh, uh, Roger Waters and uh, even I think for a small time I think even Elon Musk was on it and yeah. a couple other activists and politicians both Dem both conservative and uh, left leaning so uh, continue on yeah yeah so you know there's this there's two lists actually there's the Center for Countering Disinformation of Ukraine's list um, which has like something like seventy or eighty names and then there's a the Mirot Moretz list both of them are governed by the same people they both get their information from the same people Diane's name's on it as is Helga Zeplarush's name on it. And the first 40 people in the CDC list, uh, or the CCD, wrong wrong, wrong organization, the Center for Countering Disinformation, thir the first 30 or 40 speakers, uh, people on that list are speakers who spoke at our conferences. So I, at first I was discussing with kind of like, should we decide to take on the kill list? But honestly, no. I mean, the way I said was like listen man it just goes beyond kill list now everybody's on a kill list now we're in the verge of nuclear war and i think it was just reported that nato's doing these nuclear drills for the next week and mm -hmm. some generals are even saying yeah we're about a 20 to 25 percent chance of using nuclear bombs okay so uh, that's at the top and i think kind of you can talk a little bit about like the other people who were there because we weren't the only hecklers there yeah, there were um, some Trump people there associated with, I forget the candidate's name. Tina Forte. Um, Tina Forte. Yeah, she was there along with her supporters and they were heckling her, you know, throughout the um, town hall about things like um, immigration, um, gun control, you know, issues like that, which I don't think are as relevant as, you know, being on the verge of a nuclear war. And there was also a Hispanic guy there yelling obscenities at her in Spanish, calling her a communist. So that, I mean, that was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, I think we went on a much higher level because these people are taking us to nuclear war. They ran as outsiders, you know, and they're sending all these arms and weapons to Ukraine when we should be fighting for a negotiated settlement. I mean, there's no other way this will end other than catastrophe if we continue supporting it the way we've done so that was the point of us being there and other people should be talking too i mean that they're exercising their right they're exercising free speech and face it this is the most dangerous point in human history by far much much more dangerous than the cuban missile crisis so yeah now now the thing is and again just just to clarify because one thing that really um made me raise an eyebrow and you, you expanded, you explained about it. I think both of you explained about it on RBN's show again, check out their interview as well on RBN's uh, YouTube channel. Um, but apparently quote unquote, you cut the line, even though there was no line in that empty town hall uh, in front of a constituent. Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong. She was reading a letter. What, what exactly happened with that? Because 
she makes this accusation that you were raising the ruckus, even though it's what AOC said on Jimmy Dore show that all politicians should be confronted and we she, should raise yeah, the ruckus. I remember, I remember, I, oh yeah, I remember candidate AOC saying, I really hope people feel passionate enough to interrupt town halls, even ones that I'm in, because I really want to hear with constituents what they say. Oh yeah. Current Congresswoman AOC. How dare you? That's You're being rude. Violent. Two rude yeah. gentlemen. Two rude yeah. gentlemen. Well, there basically, you go. To, just to respond to that, first of all, out of all the town halls I've been, I've been to Gillibrand, I've been to Bowman, and I've been to AOCs. All of them have you write your question down beforehand. It, uh, not even Gillibrand's. Gillibrand, you just had to write your name, and it would be put into a fishbowl, right? And then hopefully you would be called on. Now, uh, the AOC thing was, okay, we have these slips. They had these slips of paper, and you had to write your question and your name. And they were obviously filtering the safest questions because the quote deaf constituent email that came in, it, there wasn't, there might have been a deaf constituent in the audience. I don't know if that's the case, but you can hear it in her town hall because she lies to the town hall, right? As Kynan finished speaking or, or he was being drowned out, she says, okay, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We need to move on. And then the assistants are saying, well, guess what? We just got an email from a deaf constituent. And the question is, how do we make politics more accessible for people with disabilities? And I'm just like, fuck that. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, you know, it is because I love my deaf, uh, my, my disabled people, my disabled neighbors, that I don't want them to die in a nuclear war. So I wasn't taking the mic from some deaf constituent which doesn't make sense because i don't know how they would even be able to speak. oh uh real quick jose we have a few people in chat is it possible to uh, speak a little closer to your microphone or raise it up a little bit yes well uh, we'll we'll try to speak a little closer it'll be a little awkward for me but you know oh, I yeah, it's, it's, fine. You. It, 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 it's fine but stop being so rude yeah <laughs> Yeah, being rude, right? And so um, I would just, you know, I kind of you could you could take over from here. I mean, uh, other than that, like, yeah, no, it was an email. It wasn't me interrupting someone else. I was interrupting AOC and the person reading the the question. And, uh, I just have to ask. Technically, wouldn't they be interrupting you when they bring up the email by their own logic? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so 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 in other words, AOC is once again doing a uh, little bit of deflect when she's being confronted, which is something you see a lot of these thin-skinned uh, politicians do. And you see this amongst Republican lawmakers, but you also see this amongst Democratic lawmakers. And the thing is, um, the reason why uh, – here's the I, – I respect what you guys did because what you did is what all politicians should go through. We don't owe these politicians a goddamn thing. I've said this before. If you vote Democrat or Republican, then you're a very good sucker because at the end of the day, the lawmakers in Washington, D.C. don't like you. They don't think about you. And this is the one that should upset the most for all American voters. They don't respect you because nothing has fundamentally changed. And so with the aftermath of, again, this viral video, I mean, let's face it, it shook the ground. But again, I also want to point out too that there is video of you guys also asking the same kind of confrontations to uh, Pramila Jayapal and Jamal Bowman, which I have to say, everyone, please check those out as well, because all politicians should go through this, especially the progressives, because they promise all these things. But AOC then makes these accusations towards both of you and I want you guys to clear the record on this one, and I think it's important that we that we really address this. So let me go ahead and pull this tweet up, and uh, just for everyone to understand, I spoke with Jose um, just so that you know he knew that I was going to pull this up. Uh, this is Aaron Mate, again, award-winning journalist. Take that, TYT. Award-winning journalist, Aaron Mate. AOC accuses her anti-war protesters of parroting pro-Putin, so I guess not only are they rude, but they're pro-Putin. You two oh, are okay. not don't you know anything that goes against AOC makes you a Nazi? That's, I guess that's so. just how it is. That, big, not, big, it's not complicated. I guess, I guess all I have to say is big smile, big smile, right? There you go. <laughs> Uh, she has nothing to say about Biden's rejection of diplomacy, nor explain about how the squad approved billions of dollars in weapons will help end the war. Instead, she invokes Ukraine's self-determination. Here's her a full quote from AOC's Instagram. Uh, 
Could you speak on being confronted by anti-war protesters? To which here she says, she says, and I want you to declare, uh, again, clear the air on this one. Uh, sure, they were actually not anti-war protesters. They were white ring Trumpers. So now you guys pro Putin and rude, but you're Trumpers and some were LaRouche cult me uh, members, not progressives as they claimed. Their own social media history shows this. Gee, AOC, your social media shows I'm a lot of things. she too. did all that work to make sure she could take you guys down a peg. Clearly was, she did it. It was a stunt that they uh, do from time to time. Last time they showed up at a town hall yelling about eating babies or something. Uh, you guys are cannibals now. You know, you're pro-Putin and Trumpers, but you're cannibals and rude. So there you go. It's a thing they do uh, go viral and draw on people. At this point, they are parroting pro-Putin talking points. It is not anti-war to support Russia's imperialist pro uh, project to invade and seize neighboring countries. Wait, either. You can pause it right there for a second. Go ahead. Uh, guys, I mean, all of us listening, I remember the part in that video where we're like, you guys were like, Putin's the best. My best friend. He gave me a big check. He's actually helping build my studio. I remember that part. So I can see how she could have thought, oh, wait. Never mind. It's, that wasn't in there at all. And, and then they uh, also goes on to say the only person instigating threats of nuclear weapons is Putin, no one else, which again, if you we've covered on the show where Biden's confronted to donors and other people in his inner circle that hey, they might we there's a possibility of using nukes. As far as their comments about Tulsi Gabbard, former representative Tulsi Gabbard, uh, uh, Gabbard has voted more uh, for more defense budget increases than I ever have. Zero, look it up, but you did donate. Uh, you did make your present vote for the Iron Dome, AOC. Happy to dig more into Ukraine and other posts. A lot of these right-wing video uh, and social media stunts are pre predicated on people not knowing the context and just believing whatever the person is saying for face value, yada, yada, yada. Gentlemen, please, correct the record. Are you pro Putin, <coughs> rude, yeah, we got, Trumpers, we go down the Tulsi line. Gabbard, uh, cultists? What's going on? Da, ya lu blu Putin. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he admitted it, folks. You uh, are so well, rude. Let, we'll take it point by point. point. And okay. then Kynan can, can clear it up if he wants to. I don't, because Kynan is four years younger than me. I'm 24. Kynan is 20, right? Okay. So I don't know if he has a voting record or not. I don't think I ever asked you this, Kynan. But, like, am I a truth? Am I a, a, a right wing Trumper? No, I am not like these MAGA hat, you know, uh, uh, lug heads who wear. Uh, you know, the Trump 2020 merch. You know, I have no problem with them either. Like, that's the other thing. Like, I don't have, I don't hate them. You know, I love some of them, actually. You know, I work with some of them, you know, uh, but th that's not me. But I do have tweets that say I voted for Trump twice because I did. W w w you wanted me to pick between him and Hillary Clinton? Okay, I put out a response where I said, like, yeah, the current world events unfolding right now would have happened four years earlier had Hillary Clinton won. And then Biden, he was already funding the Nazis in Ukraine since 2014. The guy has dementia. I, I don't want him in the office either. Now, I have a different philosophy when it comes to voting now, which is I don't I wouldn't vote for either of them now. Now I believe that you should vote for whoever you think should be there, no matter how unpopular they might be or how unrecognizable they might be. If they're somebody who you believe should be in office, that's who you should believe. That's who you should vote. And at the time, I was just voting for the lesser of two evils. And that was a uh, that was a mistake on my end, to be honest with you. But at the same time, I don't regret my vote either. So I don't know, Kynan, if you're a, a, a Trumpy. Well, uh, I had turned 18 at the time of the 2020 election, and I did vote for Trump then. Um because the same thing, I viewed him as the lesser of two evils. I mean, Biden is running, and we see how badly things are going under his present administration. And just to note aside, I mean, we saw that comment from Trump a couple of weeks ago saying that we need a negotiated settlement in Ukraine. Millions of people are going to die if we actually continue this war in Ukraine. And that's a sensible comment coming from him, I think. Um, but yes, I did vote for Trump. But even if you don't like him, that doesn't detract from what we actually said in that um, town hall. Yeah, and the LaRouche, the LaRouche cult thing, which is like my favorite accusation. First of all, I'm not going to be on the defensive here. I'm going to be on the offense. I think people should read LaRouche's material. First of all, so you wish you can learn economics? See, this is, this is the thing, right? People vilify LaRouche. There's this famous thing. He's a bad guy, but we can't tell you why. And I'm not afraid to come out here and say, like, listen, I've been around the org since I was 16. I'm 24 now. I've gone through the ups and downs of reading the shit online. You see cult allegations. It's not true. Uh, people can disagree with the philosophy of his economics as to whether or not an economy is physical. It just boils down to, do you believe that 
a, a human being is created in the image of the creator? Do you believe every human being is created equal? If so, what kind of government do you need to foster the, the, uh, the conditions that allow people to grow and develop? Now, the whole point of her calling me a Trumpista and a LaRoucheista is to really get at Diane Sayre. Because everybody right now who's doing early voting has a ballot. And for Senate, it says LaRouche candidate Diane Sayre. All right. If some AOC fangirl or just some Democrat sees it and they see LaRouche, they have no idea about who the hell Lyndon LaRouche is. Right. But they see that AOC doesn't like LaRouche. They're trying to discredit the candidate on that basis alone. And I think that's what's going to shoot her in the foot because she didn't realize that, you know, Diane's name is associated with LaRouche. And this is also why they're keeping Diane off the debate. There's supposed to be a big debate in 11 days with uh, Joe Pinion, Chuck Schumer, um, you know, the Republican and the Democrat for the U.S. Senate here in office. Mm -hmm. But they're keeping her off because she's a LaRouche candidate. Right. And this is something that goes back for a long time. How independents and Green Party people are always frustrated. They can never be a part of the debates. And it's like that on purpose. Remove the LaRouche thing from the equation. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're not a Republican or a Democrat, you're not getting on the debates. That's what they they put out there. And that's why they're not letting Diane debate. And now, it's the same and, tactic. And, and, and I was going to say, that reminds me of <laughs> when we back in, when we first started right around 2016, um, one big thing was the amount of people, the, 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 the double thing that goes on. It's we covered a lot of the Green Party events. That's actually kind of what we specialized in in the first election we were part of is getting a feel of the Green Party and who's there. And it's always fascinating to me, and it sort of reminds me from what you're saying, how uh, the Green Party is a, you know, from a Democratic point of view, a terrible, useless party that you shouldn't be a part of. And they're really just a bunch of scum that don't deserve even the chance to vote. But then they also were like, yeah, but if those people that were in the Green Party voted, they would all automatically 100 percent vote for us. Yeah. Oh, can I, res I, I like Go to respond ahead. to you real quickly, Daniel. Um, we had also been a part of the petitioning campaign for Diane Sayre's campaign. And, you know, maybe she told you about this when you had her on. But New York State recently changed their law, their um, ballot, their ballot access laws. So formally, it used to be 15,000 signatures that would get you on the ballot. Republican, Democrat, third party candidate, independent. You get those 15,000 signatures you're on. But they changed that recently um, under a change that Cuomo initiated. Mm -hmm. um, it's now three times that amount, 45,000 signatures for independents or third party candidates. And <laughs> what was their reason for doing it? Because they didn't want to provide matching funds to, quote unquote, frivolous candidates. Oh, and that, okay. didn't, that didn't even apply to federal candidates, which Diane is running as. So she's not even qualified for those funds in the first place, you know. So. And as a result, um, the Green Party, the Libertarian Party, and some others, they actually lost their um, party status um, because they needed to actually get 130,000 um, signatures to qualify. It's absolutely ridiculous, you know, but Diane managed to do it because of the work we put into it. But it's, it shows you there's no democracy anymore. You're living in a dictatorship. I have to I, I, if, if, I know you're going to say, Kit, go ahead. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, the, the reason why I was laughing, it's it's not because of the situation that you guys have deals. It's just that uh, I've I've heard this before, and it's in Illinois too. But what I'm actually the origin of this? Yes, and the thing is, at least in New York, you you got somewhat of a coherent answer. In Illinois, it's just cause. So if you're a Democrat or a Republican candidate running for office, at the bare minimum, two thousand, five thousand signatures just to get on the ballot, and even then, that's that's if you don't really need that number. However, if you run as green libertarian in Illinois or as independent or any other party, you need at max, I think 50,000, uh, 25,000, but really an additional 50,000. But you almost have to double because of yeah. uh, the, uh, the signature challenges that happen. And, and then, yeah, go, go ahead. And, and, and the thing is, and the thing is, uh, Illinois has very harsh draconian laws. I've interviewed libertarians and greens and independents uh, who are running for office, be it at the state level, county level, or at the federal level. And they have to climb almost, 50 million Mount Olympus, Olympus every right. single day just to even uh, get to the top and secure themselves to be on the ballot, even be on the debate stage is a whole other story altogether. So to which I have to say to you, Jose and Cayenne is uh, first time. 
Yeah, it, and then the, I think there's another aspect, especially to Illinois. I actually want to ask you guys if this is if how this is where you're at. That like Kent just mentioned the the fund the the signature thing. And every, every by the way, in Illinois, if it's a twenty five thousand requirement, you have to get fifty thousand because of the signature challenges. The other side of this, as well, and asking or I'm interested in is you also have half as much time to do the whole process mm -hmm. as Democrats, Republicans. Democrats, you have um, however many months it is to do signature, then you have a separate time for fundraising. If you're a third party in Illinois, you have ha the that first part of time to do both, and you have to do both in that time. Agreed. So, yeah, no, we, we go, go, go ahead. The, the signature thing, I mean, we wanted 90,000 because 45,000 times, so you're right, the ballot, the signature requirements, but we didn't think we were going to get 90,000, and we didn't get 90,000. So we went on our fallback, which was everything needs to be pristine. And I really got like, my ass beat for this because my, my handwriting is sloppy. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, these challenges, if they can't read it, they'll be like, I don't know. So, like, they like sat me down and they threw away sheets that like weren't legible and said, like, you need to fix this. Okay. You're like, I don't care how long it takes you. I don't care how slow you need to write. You need to fix it. Because the other thing was they didn't want us to give the, the 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 board to the other person to write it out because people make mistakes on the thing. I don't want to, have to throw out a whole petition sheet, right? So we could write their name and their address, but they had to sign it, and I think they also had to put the date on it. So I I was like paralyzed with fear because someone put the fear in God in me, and so you know we were getting like a hundred signatures a day, but that took us waking up and being out in the field from like 8 a.m. to like 4, 5 p.m. every day and then coming home and asking our neighbors to sign, asking the bodega owners to sign. OK, it took a lot. Of, it took a lot. And uh, we did it because our even though we didn't double our signature requirement, we had 66,000. And the reason why they let it go was because our signatures were pristine. OK. Like, it was clean, it was good. Like, we made sure people knew they were registered to vote, and we made sure they knew they lived where they lived, you know? And we mm -hmm. had one challenge. Somebody did ask to see our signatures, and then they let it go, okay? Every other party who submitted over 45K signatures got challenged and got booted off, okay? We were the only ones. And not even John McCain could get on the ballot in the year 2000, okay? John McCain couldn't do what we did, all right? And that's how badass we are. And that's how badass Diane is. Well, so, I, I, obviously, you two are being very rude and supporting an independent yeah, candidate yeah, trying no to kidding. raise a ruckus. These, these are young people <laughs> just entering the political process, and they're spending their time petitioning. I can't think of anything more right-wing than that. Well, here, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know what? I'm going to show my bias because when I was speaking Jose, I also found out that he's a fan of Hell's Kitchen, which I got to say, Ari, Ari earns like a thousand points. But I, I want to stay on point. I want to stay on point. Yes, I have guilty pleasures, folks. Uh, and Hell's Kitchen is one of those things. I love Chef Ramsay. I got one of his books. But anyways, besides the point, you know, also in this uh, post that AOC wrote about you guys, pro Putin. And then, of yep. course, you bring, she brings up Tulsi Gabbard, which is living, she's living rent free in a lot of people's heads, even though she's not a politician. It's always fascinated me to know. Yeah. We also, for a period of time, covered Tulsi quite extensively during when she was running. And it's just so fascinating. Like we have a, we have a view of her that's like mixed. We like, we like some things that she's done. We don't like other things that she's done, but just the response that Tulsi Gabbard initiates in some people still to this day blows my mind because i you know you're out of congress and you're that big of a lightning rod to people you did something <clears throat> yeah kynan is very good on this point because yeah for, for me like you know sorry i didn't mean to cut you off i'll just say this like people have showed me her voting record in the past like she's voted for military increased budgets i don't know anything about that i just know what she did leaving the democratic party right kynan like yeah and I was surprised, too, by the amount of flack we received for mentioning Tulsi Gabbard. It completely surprised me. I didn't know there was that many people that hated her. But we mentioned her in the context of her leaving the Democratic Party. Of course, that doesn't mean we agree with all her views on, the, on you know, on some things she's good, like the nuclear war question, on some things she's bad, right? But she made a very courageous decision on leaving this party because it is a party of war hawks. And that's, you know, the frame of reference for someone like AOC. If she really does stand up, stand up for what she believes in, you should leave the party because it's corrupt. So that's, yeah. Yeah. And that, I think that uh, you sort of 
put into words exactly my thoughts as well. The thing that I most respect about Tulsi is that she destroyed her career to do what she thought was right. And they're just like, we just watch every day politicians uh, letting that stuff slide. So I, I think what she's become now, I'm very, a little bit upset with, but I think that there, you, it's, she had, anyway. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. So go ahead. Kip. So, so yeah. And look, there's, there's a lot more I want to unpack with this too, but I want to acknowledge someone that's in the chat that wants to speak to you directly. Uh, first of all, Roger Meadows uh, obviously makes a statement here in the chat. If they're deaf, uh, then what, what would yelling matter? Uh, <laughs> also, also going on again, Roger Meadows. Great, great. Uh, he says, Hey, get ready for a long ass question for Jose on Rockfin, which I'll be able to pull up too. Hey, do we have questions? I know we have some questions coming. Should we yeah, just go over yeah. the questions? Yeah. I want to actually go, go over to make sure that we, you know, we, they're acknowledged and respected. So let me go ahead and do that. So shout out to JV. Thank you so much for the tip on Rockfin. Do appreciate it. Uh, so Roger Meadows uh, wrote this all out through various Rockfin tips. Thank you so much. So New York Progressive Action Network, NYPAN, the executive committee, hosted a session with AOC yesterday. I didn't find out of, about it till they thanked her on Twitter today, to which I replied was a clip from Sabrina showing how they violated their pledge. Now, usually uh, how, how it goes is the older left living in Los, uh, Long Island suburbs, you'd think she would catch a break from. However, my man, youngest on the on on, on there, told me uh, that they told her that she has made herself inaccessible and that she needs to change that. I said, "Well, Joe, when was the last time she spoke at N Y Pen?" He said, "This was the first time." So I'm like, "Wow, she hasn't spoken to us since she's been in office," which is something surprisingly that AOC has been doing for a while. She's nervous, trying to see if she could sew up her base because now they're in fear of losing. We tried to ward them last year. Okay, now this is for you, Jose. Okay, Jose, you said you were going to run for office as an indie for Congress, which you better, buddy. <laughs> I personally believe nothing will happen at federal level until something happens at the New York state level. So first, do you know we have a majority of co-sponsors in both chambers to pass the New York Health Care Act, uh, our version of Medicare for All? But these chuckleheads refuse to bring it up for a vote because union leadership owns stock in private health care and make bank on selling to their members so they lie to their members about the new york health care act we have multitude of other progressive bills we are trying to pass at state level the new york public banking act democracy preservation act uh, that would essentially prohibit companies who have foreign investors from contributing to campaigns to tackle the homelessness crisis we need a law uh, we need a law outlying uh, outlawing private equity from owning housing to stop the rent hikes and regret uh, uh regentrify communities a outlaw an out a, out, a law outlawing them from owning hospitals, clinics, nursing homes, medical facilities, etc. I was on Zoom call last night with physicians for National Health Care Program where they talked about how private equity makes the U.S. sicker. Uh, okay, so he goes a little bit on. I want to make sure you just, just get the rest of this right here. The New York Public uh, uh, the New York Public Builds Renewable Act, the New York Utility Democracy Act that would expand the powers of New York Power Authority to socialize all power in state that is not already municipalized and it, and qualified immunity. But most of all, we need an amendment to put U.S. by New York state lawmakers that would that would put us by New York state lawmakers that would allow voters in New York state to pass repeal New York state laws and directly amend the New York state uh, constitution via ballot initiative veto referendum. Your thoughts, my friend. Okay, well, thank you for the long question. And <clears throat> on the on the first thing you were talking about reporting to the um, AOC speaking at the NYC PAN, I want to come back to that because Bowman has actually been doing something very similar. And I think it's because of the intervention. Now, on the second thing about uh, running as an indie congressman and, and what do I think about running at the state level, um, first of all, I hope we can get to 2024. That's that's like what I, what I fucking hope because like, if there's a fucking nuclear war, <laughs> right? The uh, only thing I'm gonna be fighting and arguing and debating about is our fucking rations. Okay, that's that's the only thing we're gonna be arguing and debating about. And now on on my, you know, what I think about New York State passing their own version of a healthcare act. I mean, I believe in a top down approach. And um, if you want to know what I think and how I would do so, how I would govern, I think Diane really much like aligns with because like both you know Diane and I come from Lyndon Larouche. And, uh, or LaRouche's uh, organization. 
-hmm. And the idea there is that we govern from a top down approach. I don't believe in doing things bottom up. That's not to say that the state government does not serve a level. That's not to say councilmen don't serve a, a role or mayors or, or assemblymen or state senators or governors don't do good things. They do good things. In fact, one of my favorite governors is out in uh, South Dakota because in 1923, he passed this bill for South Dakota that basically said, hey, listen, the banks can't come in here, start speculating on our farming and fucking up our produce here. No, fuck that. I'm outlawing that. And guess what? Like South Dakota was able to rebuild their farming agriculture sector real quick. That was like, I think that was pre-Roosevelt. So, you know, that was like something really good. So now that's just my justification for like state level candidates. Now, on right, the federal level aspect, though, like I do believe that anybody should be able to walk into a hospital no matter where they are and come out debt free because you need an economy where people can be healthy. OK, and not have to be afraid of getting sick or getting in an accident or getting some like debilitating disease where it's going to cause them five thousand dollars to come out, you know, uh, healthy again, and then what, have the stress of the bills pile on them? Ah, that's there. Uh, Sorry about that. I just got a phone No, call. if you got out, I was going to say, there you go. He's saying too much real things. Yeah, so there you go. Okay. But uh, but also he he, he did add, add in a few other things here too because uh, he says uh, Roger Meadows actually wrote in because understand Texas was a, was a blue state for most of the 20th century until 1996. They didn't take it upon themselves to allow their voters to use ballot initiatives, votes, or re referendums in Texas has only been read from the 21st century. Now progressives in Texas are up, up Crabs Creek. They have no uh, recourse. I tell these New York state lawmakers, don't rest on your laurels. Progressives and socials need a backup plan when that happens. So he again writes in here. So with that said, my question is, may I make a plea to you to reconsider or to consider <laughs> run for New York State, New York State Senate, not U.S. Senate, because New York State Senate instead. Matter of fact, if your assembly member is Speaker Carl Hess, please run against him. I'm desperately trying to find people to simultaneously run against him and Yonker Senate Majority Leader Andrew Stewart Cousins, whose district is most of Westchester. Why? Because they refuse to bring up New York Health Care Act and New York Public Banking Act up for a vote. We need for them to be scared into bringing it to the floor for a vote, but we need people to run against them simultaneously or they will pass it in one chamber but not bring it up in another just to take the heat off them. Senator Rivera was about to pass the New York Health Care Act of Senate Health Care Committee, and Senator James Sanders Jr. was getting ready to pass the New York Public Banking Act out of Banking Committee, and Stuart Cousins pulled it out of committee before they voted, but didn't bother to put it on the floor. Oh, yes, I'm that guy you liked on Twitter that posted that picture of me uh, circling the circle for Diane and got her on his show. That's oh. right. That's right. Yeah. Because of Roger Meadows, we got her on the show. <laughs> so yeah, if you haven't followed, like Roger's been a really big part of the show for quite a while now, um, running out doing his thing out of New York. He's been very close with the people he's been working with to get those passed. So I know when, he, when he's coming to you and saying, if we can get these guys out, even just to make them weaker so that they maybe push these things. I know he's, he's very close. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll say this. Why doesn't he run, you know, for state assembly? Like that's that's what I would love to see. And then you know what? Get those matching funds and then donate that those funds to my congressional campaign because they don't get matching funds. Um, but no, on a serious note, like and also I think Kynan can expand on this too, because now we're going into like what we really believe about government. I mean, I appreciate state politics and state level, but the thing is I have a conception of a United States of America and I I love I love the whole country. You know, I don't believe in doing things on a state level. I do believe that you need to go from the tippy top down. And that's why I'm seeking. A, a, that's why I think federal positions are the way to go. And that's why Diane is running for U.S. Senate. You know, she could have ran for governor right, of New York. She's not doing that. Right. She's running for U.S. Senate. And that's like a big foreign policy seat right there. And. I, I, I would think it's unfair for New Yorkers to have free health care and then, you know, Texas and Florida not have it either. This wouldn't even be a conversation right now if you had Medicare for all or something to the equivalent of that right now. I don't know. Kynan, go ahead. To explain our philosophy. Take it away, Kynan. Um, well, I guess, you know, one thing I would say, I, you mentioned it earlier. I think we should focus on actually surviving this winter um, than these some of these other things, you know, not that they're not important, but, you know, the question of of thermonuclear war, I mean, it's the most prescient issue there is nowadays, you know, and we really got to get as many people as possible, you know, to just go up and 
reach out to their congressmen, interrupt them in their town halls, um, and just do exactly what we did. Um, because, you know, it's not looking really good right now, you know. And, you know, what we believe in is that all nations should be put on an equal footing. You know, there needs to be a new security architecture for all nations. We need to focus on actually their priorities, like their development goals, you know, like what China is doing right now with their Belt and Road Initiative, um, taking out over 800 million people out of poverty. I mean, these are the, th the big questions nowadays. Are we going to eliminate poverty in the world? Are we going to eliminate food insecurity? You know, and the United States needs to change its position in respect to its foreign policy and actually go back to what it used to be. You know, we were a beacon of hope to the world. You know, we would send our greatest scientists, our engineers into these underdeveloped countries and build infrastructure there. We're not doing that anymore. And that's essentially what I think Diane represents, too. She represents the best of the United States. Um, she represents the traditions of, you know, people like Lincoln, Washington, who actually built this country um, so that it would help other people in the world. Um, so that's what I would say. Probably not the most direct answer, but yeah. So, so I want to pull this up here, too, because, again, we've heard people like AOC, Bernie Sanders, and all these sycophants who are vote blue no matter who or progressive who think you could reform the Democratic Party who want to see young people get involved in politics. But the thing it's is – not they, like that. Yeah, and so, <laughs> and, so, and so they're asking you, you know, hey, uh, you know, just, just, just raise the ruckus but not towards them. So the thing is I want to pull this tweet up here because, again, it's – he said, here, here's what you wrote. Sorry I didn't finish go to leftist uh, finishing school. I'm 24 years old. I was two when 9-11 happened. The country was no, uh, known nothing but war for the last 20 plus years. Why is it whenever I ask these progressive leftists to do something, they never do? And this is a response to what she wrote about you guys. And to which I have to say, the fact that you have a sitting uh, progressive politician, a very well-known politician, uh, call out activists uh, uh, by naming them Putin puppets, uh, Trump right wing Trumpers, Tulsi Gabbard supporters, uh, and, and so on. It really I shows me that everyone that doesn't agree with me is evil, and, or or is that trying to date her? So there you go. Which I don't think uh, anyone's trying to do. So I think for our viewers and subscribers, because I I know that you you, you guys got to be heading out. I think we also have pretty quick something from uh, Dominic and uh, Rockfin. All right, I'll go ahead and acknowledge it, but but a, a one one paragraph question this time, I promise. Uh, so so what what uh, what what I want to say, and just while I pull up what Dominic wrote for, uh, wrote to you, um, what do you want to say to people who are sitting in the silence or maybe afraid to confront their politicians or, or afraid to get their voice out there or afraid to run as an independent? I want both you and your colleague Kyan to, to say, you know, say something to the people who maybe are sitting on the sidelines, afraid to get involved. What do you want to say to those people right now? Do you value your life and do you care and love your neighbors? Because at the end of the day, <clears throat> I've had this a lot, too, where people say, well, I, I support his action, but, you know, it's totally discredited by him being a LaRouche. OK, fine. Go do it then. Then if you're not a LaRouche, then it'll come out better than when you do it. Right. And but I think if you really do care about living and about your family and about your friends, you must stand up because, you know, I, we really cannot stress how bad the situation is. And the chance of thermonuclear war breaking out is like right around the corner. It's, it's, it's worse than it was, as Kaiden said, during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And I think that's the only thing on the table. As I told AOC, it's the only thing that matters right now. And I think it's going to get, it's only going to get worse. And God forbid these fucking midterms, man. I, I don't even know if we'll make it to midterms. Like it's, it's that bad. It's that, it's that scary. And I, um, unless people stand up, you may not be waking up tomorrow. All right. Now, Kyan, I want to get, have your commentary too. Yeah. I mean, what Jose said, I think was perfect. And, you know, I, I, you know, I organize with, a lot with Diane's campaign and I encounter these kinds of people all the time on the streets, you know, it's like, oh, everything is lost. I get what you're saying. I agree what you're saying, but there's nothing I can do, which I think is ridiculous. I mean, you have to stand up now. You know, there's no other choice. I mean, what else are you doing that's so important than actually avoiding war um, and saving the country from nuclear annihilation? Um, and I think that's how people should view their lives. I mean, you know, when you're on your deathbed 
and you're thinking to yourself just a few moments before you're actually going to die, you know, what was that all about? And you look at your past actions, you look at what you contributed to the immortality of the human species. That's how people need to look at themselves. They need to look at themselves as human beings and contribute to the well-being of their own fellow men and all of society. So if there was ever a moment to do that, now's the time to do it. So that's my message to people. Right on. And before we end this segment, first and foremost, I want to give a shout out to Dominic, who says our two major political parties are difficult to be challenged from the outside by other political parties. What we need are candidates that run within them with only one promise that no others will accept. Uh, this promise is to be transparent, represent their constituents by polling them before they vote on legislation. Learn more from his website, independentvoterparty.org which he also writes in good political ideas are irrelevant unless they are support supported by written laws that fulfill them for this to happen. We need lawmakers that are independent by any political influences, except from their constituents, the independent voter party.org wants to elect lawmakers that are dependent on their constituents to tell them which laws they want to pass or reject. And Roger Meadows also said, I hate jobs where I have to wear a suit and tie every day. So no, he will not run for office, even though I think he should. Uh, however, when one state does it, it will go viral across the U.S., putting heat on the federal government to do it. But if you don't, I'm cool with that. I don't agree because I think bottom-up is long-lasting because it builds a strong foundation, which he has a point here. But I hear you, LaRouche, uh, for federal indies, for state, there you go. And if you haven't been in contact, both of you, with Roger Meadows, please do so. And I want you, two to remember this as well. Uh, and we do appreciate you being on Hard Lens Media. Jose, Kyan, uh, in this profession of politics, independent media, social media, you're going to run into people who will dictate to you and tell you that you're not doing this correct or that you're troublemakers or that uh, you just don't know enough or you need to be quiet and sit down. To which or I you, say, you need to hand your whole campaign over to them because they know better. <laughs> Daniel, I got that. Uh, but but inside inside joke between me and Daniel, because we've had people tell us we can run Hardlands Media. We had the business you. version of this stuff. Yeah. So the thing is, uh, to which I have to say to both of you, uh, may your careers be long lasting. May there not be a nuclear war. Continue to be rude. Continue to be unapologetic. You don't owe anyone a goddamn answer. And you're fighting for what you believe in. And that's what all Americans should do right now. Fight for what you believe in and not be beholden to the two party system. What you two have done is exactly what these progressive lawmakers have asked for. From Jamal Bowman, AOC, Bernie Sanders, Jay Paul, every single one of them have said this. Raise a ruckus. Hold all politicians accountable. And I mean all politicians, including Republicans. Hold them all accountable, including independents and third parties. Because if you don't, they'll walk all over you. And the thing is, what our politicians have forgotten, what people on social media have forgotten and corporate media have forgotten, is that we the people are the masters of the house. The politicians are the servants. And so, Jose, Kyan, keep on being rude. Yeah, no, keep being mean, everything, man. Like I really appreciate, and I'll just say, you know, yeah. that the reason why I wouldn't run as a Dem or Republican is because I believe in the substance of my ideas. I know they're powerful. They're so powerful. They put Lyndon Larouche in jail. They smeared him as a cult leader. They smeared him as a right wing cult fascist person. They won't let Diane on the debates because of her ideas. They uh, raise the voting requirement, uh, the ballot requirements, because of our ideas. We know we're dangerous, and I will never sink down to any level of a two-party system. Well done. So then I, I wish you guys a long and su su successful career. Uh, keep on uh, pushing back. Real quick as a final question, because I know we're running a little bit out of time here. Uh, can you are tell we wrapping people... up right now? Or are yeah. we doing that? Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, real quick, can, can you tell people where they can follow you online on social media? Yeah, for me, it's uh, Hose B Trigger, J-O-S-B-T-R-I-G-G-A, Hose B, because Hose A was taken... Uh, and trigger because I made it in high school and I wanted to be a rapper. So, and then Kynan, go ahead. I think, yeah. Um, yeah, just so you, I, I made this when I was like 15. I, I changed my handle if I could. Uh, it's at Nagatone, N-O-G-G-A-T-O-N-E. That's where you can find me on Twitter. I made that when I was 15. I would change it now. I know it sounds ridiculous, but yeah. All right, thank you. Oh, both. I get it. You're a big World of Warcraft fan. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, I think this has been our best interview ever. So there you go. I want to thank everyone for joining Heartlands Media. Shout out to our moderators for keeping the peace. Shout out to everyone watching. Uh, now more than ever, let us all do we can.
to build a better future. And real quick before we jump out, just so you guys know, Jimmy Dore is as we speak talking about your guys' protests. So you probably want to go check that out when we're done. Yeah. Yeah, and tell him you're on Hard Lens Media. And if he, if need be, uh, try and get on his show too. He's from Chicago. He's one of us. So there you go. Keep speaking truth to power. <coughs> Shout out to everyone watching us. Peace, you guys. Take care. Hard Lens Media is out of here. Awesome.